ni sambolo vinaka muchidolo vina welcome welcome to day 6 of 7 days of rest and sacred renewal my name is tessa teresa and i come to you from sacred land from a marine sanctuary the maro roesia marine sanctuary Maro Roisia, meaning to cherish and hold all life sacred. We've had a beautiful little journey. I say little because it seems it has only been a few days, but in reality, it's been deep, it's been resonant. It's been connecting and it's been all things that humanity needs at this time. We started with the rebirthing process on day one and then we were nourished in the medicine garden. We then cultivated on sacred ground with the simple and sacred act of planting a seed and setting our intentions. And day four, with my sister Claudia, took us to an ancient system of the Mayan calendar. And this was our portal as we stepped through to the other side to receive those messages that are being constantly transmitting, sent to us from our guides, from our ancestors, from the ancient ones. We then went into the dream world and there we deciphered those messages. So if you'd been on the journey with us and just by being here today and hearing that in the field and having a curiosity about these journeys that are available to us as a human through our free will and our willingness to participate in the richness of life, you will begin to cognize this amazing gift that we have. And saying all of that, feeling all of that, brings us to today's theme of valuing. And in valuing, the question is, how is it that we value these. And you see, you've been given the medicine. We've, we've been given everything that we need, but it's what we do with it. It's how we participate in that realm of having everything, where indeed we sit in the playground of life, where everything is present, dark, light, trauma, joy, everything, depending on where your focus is, by the way. So as a creator, your focus, what it is that you put your energy into, will determine your experience. So this concept of valuing, if you imagine, Yes, we have a smorgasbord of all the gifts and everything that we need. But we are the catalysts for change. And those ancestors and those guides and the nature elements, they're not going to sweep down and do the work for us. It's us. And I'm sure you've all heard that saying. How did it go? We are the ones we've been waiting for. And that's it. There's nobody else. It's you. It's me. And what a gift that is. The ability to be creator. The truth of that. God in you, God in me. We can't, we can sit down and be woe is me and stay in that little corner, or we can step out into life 
and say, bring it on. What am I going to do with it? How am I going to do with it? Now that I'm open to receive the wisdom, the teachings. So it's in that vibe. It's in that frequency that I bring forward a remarkable, courageous, fiery, to a point where sometimes it's like spark, spark, spark. I'm like, whoa, slow down, sister. <laughs> but it's this woman that's the way shower for us today. Wise, courageous, sparky woman, sister, co-creator, Danalia Castell. And I met Danalia about a year ago, right here, right here in the Maro Roisia Marine Sanctuary. And our connection came through seven days of rest and radical healing, where Danalia heard the story about this place and reached out to me and invited me to meet not just, you know, over a chat, but she invited me to meet in ceremony right here on sacred ground. And our journey has evolved as we've co-created and woven with our individual threads, bought our colors, bought our fragrances, our essences. Individual, yes, but as we mix, dance and weave, that's where the magic is, is when we come together. So here we are together. And let's see what comes up as I hand over to our way show today, Danalia Benaka. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Tessa. Dear sister, valuing each other, valuing my human brothers and sisters, as many of you know, has been my journey. I was born um, hooked up with Mother Earth. I was born with the ability to hear the voice of our nature relatives. And gradually I learned how to speak to my, from my heart and to sing with them. I'm deeply grateful today for the opportunity to speak into the theme of valuing. I would say that I am someone who has felt terribly alone in the world for much of my life because I recognize that my values, even as a five-year-old child, were very different from the priorities that I saw my human parents and teachers and brothers and sisters. I think that there are more people like me on this earth who, when Mother Earth put out her call <laughs> for souls who are willing <clears throat> to be here at this time on our earth, <clears throat> and for many of us to come in decades before in order to prepare ourselves inside to understand what our unique gifts are and to have the courage and the connections with each other and in my case, the connections with my nature elders to have the courage to step forward with them. So before I go any further, I'd like to acknowledge 
I'd like to acknowledge that I am coming to you from the unceded territory of the Quatsino Nation. I acknowledge that Mother Ocean through the Quatsino Sound or Inlet is just a hundred meters down the snowbank. I acknowledge her sister, Mother Ocean in the South Pacific, where Tessa is. I acknowledge you, a grandmother. And I'm deeply grateful and excited to meet you again this day. As I honor the valuing that has guided me to become who I am today. So let's begin as I <clears throat> often do with sound. Sound for me is the fastest way to transform consciousness. And in this way, sound weaving, a term that I use to call my improvised form of sounding is intended to weave the heart connection between those of us who are in the field. So I offer this opening sound weaving to beloved Mother Ocean in the south, <laughs> weaving in our beautiful Mother Ocean in the north, and to honor each and every one of you and all the nature beings that you love. Great Mother Waters of the North and South. I give thanks for this day. I give thanks for the sacred breath of life. I give thanks for the flame of infinity in our hearts. I give thanks for the water that flows in our veins. I give thanks for the earth that fleshes our bones. I give thanks to the great mystery who walks beside us and holds our hands I acknowledge 
that beside me I have crystal representations of each of the nature elders who are part of my personal and eco relations team. I acknowledge each and every one of you who are here as sovereign beings, gifted beings, courageous beings, beings becoming fully human like me, remembering the agreements that we made with the ancient ones long ago to be co-creators with our nature relatives to birth a new reality on earth. For those of you who don't know me, I identify as a planetary ambassador and sound weaver. I have dedicated the past 13 years to understanding how I can use my gifts in order to support harmony on earth. I have been building significant relations with bodies of water, trees, and mountains around the world. Each of those relationships are unique and different because the spirit and character and the voice of each of our nature relatives is different and unique. A big part of my personal study through this journey has been to explore the ethics of our encounters. It's one of the reasons that the term or the word eco relations that I recently coined feels so suitable to my particular offering at this time. Because the quality of my relationship with these nature elders is my highest priority. So although what I'm going to share with you today is the wisdom and the messages that I've received from many of my elders, the real gold, the real strength is the bond we share in our heart. And just like human relations, it requires to be fed in order for it to remain strong and the communication channels to remain open. And for each of us, my tree and myself, my river and myself, to track the changes in each other, to witness. I'd like to share with you a story that has to do with valuing myself and valuing others. In November of 2021, I received a message and instruction to be with Mother Ocean for the winter. The opportunity arose because my current roommate decided to move to another town. And so the question was on the table for me where is my forever home? Where is that place where my human tribe is? And as the weeks went by, I received nothing. No words, no images, no messages. And it was very perplexing to me because this is how I receive my, my instructions. And finally, I found myself in Vancouver at English Bay in a ceremony the day before I was to return home and begin my plans to move. And I suddenly realized that I was asking the wrong question. It wasn't about where is my forever home and where is my human tribe. It was about the fact that wherever I am, as a human being or as an eco relations ambassador, I am to be fully who I am. And so in the blink of an eye, I tuned in to the field of my nature elders and in, uh, in the planet and all of a sudden full vision opened up and I saw myself sitting with mother ocean and I heard saw felt yes. 
because the question was not where was my forever home the question was where is my home for the winter of 2022 and so i know that many of you have arrived at the same point that i have where we're asking a question and not receiving an answer and often it was because we weren't asking the right question so the message that I got shortly after I returned home was yes, be with Mother Ocean for the winter. And the next one was get light and be mobile. Get light and be mobile. And I knew what, what that meant. That meant that it was time for me to release more than 10 to 25 years worth of ceremonial items, musical instruments, cloths, altars, goddess statues intimate things that had traveled with me around the world for decades doing ceremonies with wonderful sacred people but it was time to let them go because i could sense that i was moving into a new level of my apprenticeship with my elders that this time with mother ocean in the winter i was going to be shown or initiated into something in which i needed to be completely light with the objects that are in the physical world and around me so this is where the valuing comes in so here i have these items that are extremely valuable to me because of their relationship because of where they've been and the ceremonies they've been a part of so how do i spiritually garage sale <laughs> these sorts of things so holding on to the value that they were to me and accepting that I could define that value if I chose. A $20 statue, but had traveled for more than a decade and been, been involved in more than 100 altars, its value to me was almost priceless. So guided by the message that I heard, guided by the value that I regarded for myself and my relation with these items, I formed a small private Facebook group of about 45 people. And they were people that I knew and who knew me. No strangers and no mailing <laughs> of the items. And I said to everyone right off the top, I explained that this was going to be a spiritual release in which the value of these items was going to be determined individually by their relation to me and not their commercial value. I informed them that what I was going to do was post groups of like items. And I would say one sentence about where each had been or where it came from or something significant about it. And then I would share the story about one of them. And I kept that promise through almost a hundred items. And the third thing that I said to people was, when you look at these items, when I post these beautiful things, and we all have a lot of crow energy, right? We see these beautiful things and we want to have them. <laughs> I invited people to check into their heart and ask themselves the question, am I meant to steward this item next? Am I meant to steward this sacred item next? And if you got the answer, no, thank you for listening, witnessing the story and the item, right? And move on. But if you got yes, then put your name in the comments for which item and I will contact you personally. And do you know that out of all of those items, there was only one time that two people vied for the same item every single instance someone came forward and said that's for me put their name in and then we 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 negotiated the exchange and the interesting thing part a part about that one time that there were two people vying for the same thing it was a statue of kuan yin and when it came to my statues of Kuan Yin, there was no way that I was going to put a dollar value on them. How could you put a value on a goddess? She is a living presence for me. And so I stayed out of that. 
for those particular posts I shared, this is who they are. And just know that you are going to ask your heart, what amount am I offering to Kuan Yin for this? Not to Danalia, but to Kuan Yin for this. And interestingly enough, one person said, that one's for me. A second person said right away, oh dear, I gave all mine away. I really want that one. And then the other woman said, oh, that's okay, you could have it. And I was just about to type and say, no, no, you called it first, right? And the second person said, oh my goodness, there's another one. And so with both of them in private messaging, they wanted me to help them determine the value. And I said, not my job. This is an offering that you're making from your heart to Kuan Yin. You will know. And the very next morning, I got private Facebook messages from each of them saying, I got this amount and it was exactly the same amount. And it was many, many, many times more than the commercial value of that object. And I knew because of what had just happened that that particular amount of money was money that I was meant to earmark in the future for some person's need that related to the energy of Kuan Yin. And that money has been set aside in cash for that moment when I know, ah, this is where this money is supposed to come through me from Kuan Yin to someone to, to empower or support the energy of compassion. So as you can see, <clears throat> this was an experience that rather than just garage selling and people competing and people touching and pawing my things that are sacred to me, but they don't know that how sacred they are. I saw it as my responsibility to set the value of these items and to invite people to participate in this kind of value setting with me. And everybody did. And the people who bought items came, some of them I hadn't seen for eight years or nine years and we had beautiful connections. And so I offer this as a demonstration that I believe <clears throat> that valuing is a frequency. It's a frequency. It's a frequency. And we can co-create it together. Many of us like you are many decades old like I am, and we were raised in a commercial value system. And I know that if you're here on this call, it's not something that has probably resonated with your heart in as much time as that is. And so we are at this pivotal time on our earth where I believe we have the freedom, the sovereignty, the courage, the intuition, and we have each other. And we can create value according to our definitions, regardless of what the outside world might say. So thank you for, for um, receiving this story of personal value setting and honoring endowing objects with the love and the care and the attention that true relationship brings. And take just a moment, let's just breathe and, and feel. <clears throat> Where in your life could you set the value of something according to what feels right to you? And now I'm going to do something that I have never done before. I'm going to introduce you to my
<clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Now, let's begin. Sometimes when these words come out of my mouth, I, <clears throat> I don't know what they mean. And then their meaning unfolds in my life. And this was one of those cases. So welcome to my world. <clears throat> Meet my family. And right there in the middle, you see someone I call Mrs. B. And you know, she's a completely man-made drum. And she has the heart of the hive. She's been with me since 2006. And traveled all over the world. Thank you, Mrs. B, for what you um, hold for us in our holding journey. So after I received this message, A, in 2008, that I was an interspecies ambassador, and in 2010, realized that these were the two relationships I was to focus on, four species of sacred elder trees actually adopted me. Can everybody see the screen? I'm just checking. Can you let me know, Pamela? Yes? Sorry, everyone, I'm just checking. Uh, yes, we can see you. I see the screen, I mean the Thank screen you. share. Thank you very much. Thank you, I just wasn't sure. All right, so. So four species of sacred elder trees adopted me. These are all in British Columbia, the Sitka spruce, the red western cedar, the weeping willow, and the cottonwood, all in different locations. And over the years, they taught me how to slow down, sit still, and listen. I'm deeply, deeply, deeply grateful to these elders who continue to um, support and guide me in my journey. In 2012, I bonded with Ishtako, Fraser River, on the Claytley Tene territory in Prince George, British Columbia, Northern Turtle Island. It was many years actually before I learned his Claytley name, which is Ishtako, and that his name means the waters within each other. The first seven months of our bonding is akin to uh, a marriage. And I have many, many stories and songs about how our partnership unfolded by him living in my house in a mason jar, like you see me kissing there at the river. 2022 marks the 10 year anniversary of our bonding. And I cried when I left Prince George three weeks ago, knowing that, he, of course, he lives in my heart, but that I was leaving his banks. This, this truth, this truth brings water to my eyes and it's both water speaking as i've come to understand 
and it's also water of my gladness. I know that there's many, 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 many people on earth who feel a deep soul loneliness. And I know that many of us are conditioned to believe that the assuage, the, the comfort of that feeling of loneliness is meant to come through our human relations. And I believe that that's true for some of us. But for others of us, those of us like me, who are wired into Mother Earth, it was only when I admitted this and began to step fully into this relationship that my loneliness disappeared and my purpose and reason for being here started to arise in me. And so this is one of the reasons why I feel that developing a relationship with a body of water or a tree that's personal to you is extremely important for our mental health and to give us the strength and the courage to be fully who we are in their witnessing of us and in their loving of us. No go pila. No go pila is a very famous tree being in Cape Town, South Africa. She's more than 400 years old. She is a giant wild fig tree. And she lives behind the Ubuntu Wellness Center in Cape Town on Kloof Street. Her name means the All Healing Mother Tree, and she truly is. We bonded in 2019 during a dark night of my soul in Cape Town. And out of all that darkness and dissolution, we met in person and we recognized each other. She gave me a healing, a balm uh, in through my third eye that I needed desperately to stabilize me and to remember who I am. I am a being of love. But sometimes in the polarity, the reaction, the judgment, I forget, I forget I'm a being of love and I have a place with my nature elders. Even if I'm having trouble being in a place with my human relatives. We have a shared mission. Remember how I said, like each of my elders, uh, we have a different relationship. So my mission is earth harmony and so is hers. And so we resolved before I left Cape Town to continue our mission together to serve earth harmony. And anytime I call upon her her energy starts to coalesce inside of me and it is the purest form of love I have ever experienced. Pure, pure, pure mother love. Thank you, sister. Thank you, thank you. December 15th was the night that I prepared to set out from Prince George where I'd lived for more than a decade. And through my crystal connections with each of my nature elders, I sat with each of them and asked them if they had a message, anything to say before we all transitioned to the coast. And she showed me her roots, which was the first time that that had ever happened. Normally our connection is through her trunk and these beautiful exquisite branches and this frequency of energy, pure love that she radiates. But she took me into her roots immediately. And I heard, saw, felt, we connect through our roots now. It is time for the medicine of lower earth. So this was a perfect example of our relationship evolving, becoming different in its um, relational location, if you will. And I will say, and I'm sure this is something that you know also, when I sat on December 15th, 2021, in the listening field with my elders, which is what we're going to do together very soon, I noticed that the field had changed. It was different. It's not the same as it was 
prior to winter equinox, winter solstice, excuse me. It's not the same, and we are not the same. And so that's part of what I would call valuing our elders and our relations and eco relations is that it's a living, it's a living, evolving relationship that we come to new and fresh and from a listening place. My third, what I would call a family, family is Mantavuna Chala. And our bonding is through body. When I met Arunachala in, in 1997, I spent days up on his mountain in the evening. I would come down and the son, grandfather's son had been baking the, the, the black rock that was at the base of his mountain. And I would take off my pack and lay my full body down and he fired me. He fired me in some of the most sensual fire, activating, holding, seeing, feeling experience I've ever had in my life. On my birthday this year, I held an eco lab. This is an online experience I've been holding this year where each of us are exploring our relationship with the waters in our own body. In July of 2021, rage arose in me in relation to some police violence against land defenders that was happening in my country. I, I was asking fire for help. I was asking fire, show me the fullness of your blessings. That's not just ah, burn down the house. So I called to him, sorry about that. I called to him and I, <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I called to him and he said, respect fire, don't feed it. And for me, this was a message to stop looking at the videos of the police brutalizing the, the land defenders, that this wasn't going to assist me into understanding how my rage and my fire could help me again serve earth harmony so the last few slides i'm going to share with you is meet the other nature elders who are part of my eco relations team and these kootenai three are um are there a triumvirate i call them uh, that i met in 2020 there was a period of time when we could move around and I was called to lead uh, um, a sound journey called I change and uh, and I did two tours, one to the coast and then one to southeastern BC to the Kootenays and this is where I met Kootenai Lake. And rock and tree and these this was the first time that I had met a group of beings who were woven so intimately together that I knew that their message and their connection with me um, had to do with me um, tuning into the, the, the mix of their relations, the mix of their relations. I will also say that Kootenai Lake is the first, uh, one of a few ha who has never spoken to me. And at the moment I walked up to her and you see me there on the left, she beamed me with this white crystalline light straight into my third eye. I had my drum, you can see I have my drum in my coat. And I put that down and I just began to receive. So she, like another well that I met in China, never asks for anything back. There's no call for reciprocity. It's just my job to receive from her. So in 2020, and this again relates to what we're about to do together, in 2020, I discovered during lockdown, planetary lockdown, that through the heart bond that I had developed with these various elders around the world, that I could open what I called a water field or a tree field, and later I'm calling it a listening field, and that we could dialogue together 
these elders that I had met in person, but we could we now communicate on the energetic level. And I also discovered even more exciting is that based on the heart bond you have with a particular body of water or tree or mountain or other nature relative, you can invite them into the listening field and dialogue directly as well. So Grandfather Iguasu and I have never met in person. He came in through a eco lab in which my dear friend Andrea Ferrari invited him in. He is her nature elder. And through him being in the water field, we were able to meet directly and we discovered our purpose together. And so he's become <laughs> my one of my grandfathers and he is cool with that. I've asked him and he told me. And one of the messages that he gave me in July in one of the eco labs was do not be afraid of your power. There is a right place for it. Full strength is needed now. And I know that this message is for all of us, not just me. So I invite you to really receive this message in your heart and know that it is true. One more who's part of my team is grandmother Huang He. Um, some of you may know that I worked for almost two years in China. I worked for a private company and I designed nature connection programs. And while I was there, I had an opportunity to do two water pilgrimages. And in 2017, which was my second year, I took a pilgrimage as far as I could get to the headwaters of the Yellow River. And I ended up in Machu, which is a Tibetan town um, on the grasslands. So again, December 15th, the message that I received from grandmother Huang He was, Remember, we serve the people with wisdom. Remember, we serve the people with wisdom. Remember, we serve the people with wisdom. And already I am seeing how her reminder to me is really inviting me to step up. Because I don't know about you, but there's a lot of things that are happening around me uh, as I as I move around or in the world that I feel anger about quickly. Not okay with me. Lots of things that do not feel okay. But her remind me, her reminder reminds me, just as Aruna Chalas does, which is respect fire, don't feed it, which means don't dwell on the thing that happened that pissed me off. Find a way to serve the people with wisdom. How can I bring wisdom to the situation? And of course, that begins with me doing the work inside and then following through with my human relatives on the outside. So that is the end of my introduction to my, uh, my family. And I really, um, invite you at this moment I had to open up the the um, mic and just before we open uh, a listening field together with their elders I would love to hear from any of you um, about what what struck you about what you saw or what you heard and and how that might relate to you who would like to go first I guess I'll go. Um, yeah, so what struck me um, in sharing of your uh, nature elders um, and what resonated with me was the grand, uh, grandfather uh, waterfall um, of do not be afraid of your power. Uh, yeah, breathing that one in. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a huge message because I, I do feel within my journey myself that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the opening of stepping more fully for showing up for myself and uh, showing up to step into my own uh, journey full strength um, and not needing to know all the details um, is really, really a takeaway for me. Um, yeah, so it's it's an exciting beginning and i am just totally feeling like yeah the, the field the magic of this new year is already so so powerful and wow 
I feel like that wisdom mm -hmm. will go such a long way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else. Hmm. Anyone else? This is Shalania, and I am just amazed at all of the synchronicities uh, uh, between your path uh, with the water and the trees and the animals and mine. And some of the time frames are just amazing. Some of the assignments that I have received are just incredible. And I just love the way that you have been able to weave, as you said, weave the sound and your ideas and everything into uh, a beautiful way of bringing it forth in, um, mm. in humility, but yet in power. And I think that's very beautiful. I, I really honor that. And I thank you. It's just been, I'm so glad I showed up. <laughs> Someone else. And don't be shy to say, ah, that's all a bunch of hooey. <laughs> Where's the science? Where's the science? <laughs> I have a bunch of hooey. Um, <laughs> I forget. Now you made me forget what I was going to say. <laughs> no, no, I remember now. I remember now. Um, when you talked about the fire, don't feed the fire, don't feed the fire. Um, that brought home to me while I did the sitting with fire uh, Ecolab with you. And that is one of the messages that I received uh, in my personal life is sometimes fire needs to be fed, but in a lot of cases, in, in this case with me too, and with what's happening now in, in, in the world and everything, it's, yeah, like, um, oh, I, Shalani, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Shalania, a beautiful name, um, what you said about the synchronicities, um, just about everything that you said is like being, what did Chantal just say? Showing, being our power, showing our power, our full power. Um, and it's, as things well up, it's everything that you're saying is very close to what uh, the messages that I've been, or the um, information that I've been getting from um, another uh, person, Jacqueline Fay Hobbs, Oracle Girl, um, is it's all about that really about the same it's about letting whatever is inside of you you have your own we have our own instructions inside of us and just letting that come forth in the moment we don't need to do too much thinking it's just letting it come forth what what presents itself to me in that moment and then I it just comes out of me you know it just it just comes out of me thank you Daniel. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Someone else. Which mes message resonated for you or yes. I too I have really a... resonate. Hi. <laughs> with the with the timelines and the synchronicities. Maybe I'll send you an email about that because there's a lot. Uh, <laughs> but I just felt so this message came through this like excited little child was like, oh my God, we can do this, you know? And um, <laughs> I was like, yes, <laughs> I've spent a lot of time in the people realm, you know? And um, this waterfall, I used to sit by in Ithaca, New York, Cascadilla Falls. I could feel, I was seeing it so vividly and where I used to lay on the rocks there and I could feel its excitement of, like thinking that it it can contact me now, like through guidance of someone like you. So I I just feel very inspired. And the last thing was um, the part where you said about the roots. Uh, what was that part where we're we're going in deep in the earth? Um, the medicine the medicine of lower earth is needed now. Yeah, yeah it's no kupila, the tree. Yeah. Yes, I've been exploring in meditation 
always I'm in these caverns, these caverns of water, like deep within the earth. Um, they're they're like the forgotten. They've like the forgotten water that they want to to um, to help. So mm. thank you so much. Mm. Beautiful. And I would just say that I received that message from Nokopila on December fifteenth, and I had already um, been guided to begin reading uh, Rupert Sheld not Rupert Sheldrake Merlin Sheldrake's book uh, Entangled Life. And he has a beautiful way of writing about the mycelial network and the fungi. And if if you're anything like me, um, what happens for me in my process is when it's time for me to learn about something that's related to my mission, I become curious about it. If it's not related to my mission, I'm not interested in learning about that topic. And so I've been literally reading uh, Rupert Sheldrake's book, um, Merlin, sorry, that's his son, uh, Sheldrake's book. And then that message came through uh, from Nokopila. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're all listening. We're all listening. So I haven't had much chance to listen in to the roots with her. But uh, the other interesting thing about Nokopila is that they believe that her roots, wild fig trees have very deep roots. And she is actually sitting on in the heart place of the chakra system, land chakra system from Table Mountain to the ocean. And so a person who's connected with the Kamisa, which is the underground river, speaking underground again, uh, there is some belief that uh, Nokopila's roots actually go down into the sweet waters of the Kamisa, which is this super, super sweet water. So I choose to, you know, find out what is it that the roots together when Nokopila and I are, are communicating that the roots will, her roots will show us. So thank you. Thank you. Someone else. So my English is not so good and I don't know if I, uh, I understood only half. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I live here in Italy in the mountains uh, alone uh, uh, an hour from uh, the town. And I am really connected with woods, with waters, I live inside of them all and I have to go uh, by foot. I can't come up by car. I have to go one uh, half an hour. And it, it resonating for me was um, that um, if it's the moment, all will speak to me. In the moment, I don't hear, but I go out, I, I speak with, the, I go in the land, I go in, in the night, I, um, I say, I am singing, I do all the say, these things, but uh, I don't get uh, an answer. But uh, I, don't, I don't remember what you say, but you said, I think, or you wrote, it will come when it's the moment, it will come. And I do my work and um, yes, uh, and I am happy to, to be here in these mountains, in these lovely mountains, in the Dolomites. And next summer I have to walk, to go down like you. And I don't know what is then, but uh, um, this, um, these words that you said, was very important for me because I don't know, but I love the earth and I, I don't know more. And I have to um, believe in me. Yeah, that's all. I, I, it's, it's not so easy. It was not so easy for me. <laughs> Thank it you. It was amazing. Amazing, Evelyn. Amazing. Sylvia, I'm just going to ask you to mute just so that... Oh, I thought I was yeah. muted. Go ahead. Um, thank you, sister. I'm acknowledging the Dolomites. I'm acknowledging the forest. 
in which Evelyn lives. I'm acknowledging and can feel the bond between her and them. I'm really grateful, Evelyn, that you shared with us because what we are talking about is a language. It's a language. It's a resonant language. It's a frequency. And you received it. Didn't matter if you actually understand the words themselves, you received the transmission. It's a transmission. And you transmitted back. We all felt you. We all felt your forest and the Dolomites. By speaking to them with your love, through your love and your heart, you brought them into the field. They are here now. They are here now. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you've brought up something really, really important. So I'm going to speak to it just at this moment. And that is, is that how do you know when a nature elder is speaking to you? How do you know? So yes, this has become my work now. I mentor people to help you develop your own gifts of communication with who you're meant to communicate with. So I can absolutely help you. And at this moment, I will say to you, you saw that in the beginning, I sat with the trees for two years. Yeah. Sit with trees and connect heart to heart with the tree and just breathe and feel and slow down. And with each breath, your awareness will drop from your head to your neck into your body. When you are embodied in your own body, first, you get to know and notice what's going on in your own body. When you can discern that quickly, then you can tell when you're sitting with a tree or a mountain or the wind when a message comes in because you notice something changed. Sometimes the change is I get an image. I see an image wasn't there before. Sometimes I'm a telepath, empath, incarnator. So I hear, I hear words without sound. I also feel sensations in my body. And then I feel feelings in my heart. And then sometimes I just know. This is what we call clair cognizance. Clair cognizance. We just know. And I have been following my own Claire cognizance since I was five years old, and it has never steered me wrong. And now I trust it implicitly, 100,000%, I trust it. I don't read books. I don't understand science. I don't care about science. Everything I need to know comes through the relationship bond. And tree will tell me if tree needs something. Water will tell me if it needs my help. Sometimes all it needs is me to get out of the way so it can regenerate itself. But back to my point, slowing down, breathing and feeling is how you begin to be able to receive what are sometimes subtle messages. And I am sure, Evelyn, that you are receiving messages all the time. But when our mind is really fast, it just skips over them. Sometimes they speak to us very subtly. These messages that I put in my presentation, I'm sitting, I sit with a, a crystal that represents me in one hand, and I sit with the crystal that represents Mother Ocean in the other hand, and I breathe and I tune into her, and sometimes I just hear it, boom, and I breathe and feel and 
come out and write it down and that's it. It's fast. It's very, very fast. Right. And it is practice. It's practice. And the practice is more about learning to trust what you hear and feel and see. So the second stage, and I will just say to you that this is coming up for me because I'm doing experiments with foundations and organizations, people who are caring about a tree or a river or a watershed. And I'm I'm starting to work with them to teach them how to dialogue directly with that tree or that watershed. So the second part of receiving the message is how to unpack it, how to understand how that message applies to your human life or the human world. In my experience, our nature relatives, they witness our human world, but they don't understand it like we do. So part of it is, is to, to take in that message and to, to do the work of letting yourself unpack it, to discover what is the gold in that message that you can now take into your life and act on. And I'm gonna come back to the, th the theme of valuing because this is something that's also becoming more mm, hot for me and that is many of us speak with our nature relatives many 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 of us do this talk to trees talk to water you know talk to the mountain talk to our plants and then i always say to people and do you pause after you speak and breathe and listen for what that nature relative has to say back to you because two-way communication is necessary to actually be in co-creative partnership. Co-creation means that both people get to put their, or beings both get to put their wisdom in center. And then each gets to take from that wisdom, including our nature elders. I was very surprised this July and uh, June and July in the eco labs that I did to discover in one of them where the elements, the master elements were stepping up to take more responsibility to teach humans how to be in harmony with them. And I was like, what? I thought your soul contracts were set, right? I thought that only humans got to modulate. But then Mother Ocean showed her showed me uh, her being a babysitter, where all these infant babies were in these woven baskets, and I the vision I saw was a bay, an ocean bay, and all the babies were in this basket, and they were they were brought to this to the ocean every afternoon, and then I turned and looked in this vision, and I saw the mothers, all the new mothers lined up along the beach, relaxing. <laughs> and, and receiving personal time because Mother Ocean was was taking care of 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 teaching the, the infants to remember their connection with her now that they were outside. Now, who knows if that will ever come true, but just the fact that that it's alive in me, certainly as an as a possibility is is super exciting, but again, also indicated to me that potentially that everything's changing, including potentially the soul contracts for each of these elders. So I'm gonna move on now and, and say, is there anyone else who wants to say anything? Because I'm looking at the time and I would really like to open a field and invite you to, um, to have a message. Um, yeah, anyone else? Yes, yeah, Suzanne. Thank you so much, Donalia. That was fresh air. There was a pure fresh air. <laughs> I'm so amazed. <laughs> Poor. That's that, that's really amazing. I can really put that in um in the education I I receive from a Mayan teacher, a Mayan keeper. We 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 be trained and it's open for everybody. So um um to to fly to mountains, to shape shift in animals, or first, you know, it's it's a it's a gradu gradient part. First, 
act like an, an animal and then become an animal and different animals, different locations in them um, on the earth. And what you just brought in, I can use perfectly to, to reach out the communication of myself. So that's, whew, that's really wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> And if, ha if anyone has interest in that, please, you find me in Facebook, just text me and I can connect you with the teacher. Hmm. If anything, hey. you are interested. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. And go direct is one of my big things. Go direct and listen 360, meaning that you go direct from yourself to your nature elders and they will help you learn what you need to learn right along the way yeah anyone else wish to speak yes jimmy welcome brother hola <laughs> hola hola uh, hello thank you uh, first i want to honor and thanks all the women of the world for your for their love wisdom and for all that they are doing from the heart Thank you, thank you so much. Second, uh, thank you, Daniela, for your present for your presentation. It was beautiful. It was it was nice. Uh, the medicine of the past, present, and uh, future is our heart, and in the connection with nature, in connection with the trees, with the mountains, the rivers, the the wind, the wine the rocks, the plants, the sun, the moon, and the, 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 this planet is so beautiful, Gaia, Gaia is so, so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yeah, Jimmy came in and was part of the uh, the Eco Labs. So I will say that I do Fire Eco Labs called Sitting with Fire. They're new this year, uh, balancing out Mother Water. And then the Water Eco Lab is called um, uh, I Am a Water Body. And uh, and you can see the descriptions of those at watergratitude.me and also at my Facebook. Um, uh, De Castell Eco Relations. I'll put that slide up at the very end. In the interest of time, I'm I'm going to invite each of us to just share who we asked the question of, and what message did you hear, see, feel, or know. And again, you might have received an image. So just describe the image, just report the news. And then if you have a go, oh, this relates to this in my life, if you wanna make that connection, sure. But at this moment, no stories, just the, just the message, who gave it to you, and if you, go, if you understand what it's connected with at this moment. So I'm gonna begin. I asked Mother Ocean first here in Coal Harbor. And uh, as I tuned in, meaning I sent my feeling fields into her water in the bay through, through my, my vision and my empathic fields, I heard, saw, felt the pathway of harmony may be narrow to begin. But speaking in good faith, if I continue to speak in good faith, it will slowly grow. And this is because I find myself in a place where there's a lot of, there's conflict here. There's fish farms, there's issues around the Quetzino Nation and their sovereignty. And there's something about it happened for me at a, a local hotel where I was treated extremely poorly. And I, I wish to do something about that. So that's my message. And it was Mother Ocean. I did go to Ishtako, my river, and he just went salmon, salmon everywhere. And I have unfinished business, a salmon project with him. And so I also get from this message, salmon, salmon everywhere, that there are salmon rivers where I am too. So whatever salmon is calling me, I can begin that here. I don't have to wait till I go back to Ishtako's watershed. So I'm going to pass to Evelyn. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. I asked um, my mountain here, Saurasas, and yeah, it was very uh, a short answer. You have to be still for hearing, quiet and still. And I know it's a problem for me to be really still. And so it's good and I have um, homework for the next time to be really still and how you said also. And yeah, I, I am grateful and thank you. Did you hear Sylvia? Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn. I, I'm sorry I didn't hear. Um, I, um, I received my message from a, a tall tree, a tree that I've just recently, it's been around forever, but I've just recently begun communing with him. He's a very tall tree. And I asked my creek first, Peterson Creek, but she didn't have anything to say. She was just being very playful. And she, she just was reminding me to just, like you said, Danielle, in the message, playful. Just um, remember, remember to play was, 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 was her message. Remember to play. And Tall Tree then um, chimed in with, he, he came first actually, and, and, and he, he said, stand tall, remember your roots. Thank you. And I, I'll call, I, um, uh, um, tag Iris, please. Thank you. Um, the simple lake near me um, showed me the image to be in the water, touch her, feel her, see her, and have fun. That's the message I got. Thank you. Um, Pamela, please share. Thank you. So I spoke to Shadir Falls. The original name is a kick potic, which translates to pipe bowl falls. And uh, what I got was an image, a, 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 a rising up and opening out image, i.e. And it seems the light coming from the lower parts of the earth up and out. I pass to Suzanne. Thank you, beautiful. And would everyone please put your message and who it's from in the chat and that way it will get saved. And I can say, I can share that with everyone. Um, and if you wanna put your email address also with your message, then I will send out that chat to everyone. Thank you, Suzanne. Okay. Um, I called in the Toma Lake from the Swiss Alps where the three rivers um, are coming from. And I felt the message, relax, be safe, be in trust and, um, and prosper in love with yourself and others to create new relations. Awesome. Suzanne, out of all of those, which would you say feels the strongest? When we get a lot of messages, it's some, it's often helpful to just go, what's the strongest one? That The one that I get the most charge or feels the most scary or... So pick one or two out of that list that you got. Oh. Um, yeah, don't think about it too much. Just come down into your heart. Which one of those messages from Toma Lake do I begin with? Just, just one thing. What do I begin with? One thing. Which one of those messages, which one of the messages do I begin with? You can just ask your heart, bring your attention down your heart and say, which one? 
can ask the lake. Stay in love and work with others. Okay, got it. Good. So circle that one. All right, because we can't we can't do sort of six and seven things at once. We can't okay. and especially now it's too busy. The field is busy. There's so much going on. Okay. So just stay with that one. Keep the rest as part of your archive, right? Part of the yeah. library of message, but circle that one. And, and you know, you might want to put it on a piece of paper and put it up in your room or make a drawing or yeah, that sounds that feels very powerful to me that one. All right. Can you repeat um, it? I just forget it. <laughs> what did I uh, say? I thought it was one that you writ you wrote. It was something about relations in love. Um, it's in the recording, but you said stay in love and work with others. Yes, thank you, thank you, Heather. <laughs> thank Beautiful. You. Yeah, thank great. You. Felt very, that's it, that's it. Boom. You can tell, yay? You can tell when somebody says something, it's like, whoosh, you know, it, and you always remember it, it's pithy, it's, it's activational. It's not an affirmation, it's, a, it's like a decree. We be it so. All right, uh, who's next? Chantel. Yeah, thanks. Um, so uh, from the um, Douglas fir tree that I connected to from Avatar Grove, um, I could feel, of course, the presence and it rooting me ground even more. Um, and its message to me was be more of yourself and you will find this as you're rooted. Um, I'm rooted now, but to be more rooted, you will find a new portal into your life in ways that you would not have imagined. So I definitely feel it calling to, for me to be further expanded to myself. Beautiful. And just see how pristine the, just those words, right? Just those words that you said, put those in the chat. And I know the tree she's talking about. So when you see this tree, who is so completely herself, so completely herself, <laughs> this is where, you know, when you receive that message from this tree, it's like, okay sisters reflecting what it looks like to totally be yourself not to hold back in your gnarliness right <laughs> not to try to minimize your gnarliness glorify your, your your gnarliness okay how about you kate uh yeah my question was actually directed towards the black hills and it felt like wallace black elk himself reminding us that peace begins with us it's about being peace among the people. And of course, much more, but I will say that was the highlight. Wow. And I'll pass to Heather. Yeah. And just breathe and feel. You know, when you hear these, when, when Kate spoke that, I felt it as a transmission. So again, I encourage us, you inhale, it's a way of saying yes, you know, and exhale is letting flow. Inhale yes and flow. And so you integrate that wisdom with your breath. And we take a moment, I let it land, right? And then the next person speaks. So we're really taking them in. Thank you so much, Kate really very, very, very deeply honored that the Black Hills are here in this field with us and that this message has come directly from um, the, a human ancestor deeply rooted in those hills. Um, sorry, was someone else called? Um, if not, just jump in. Yes. <laughs> Um, I, I have reached out to the waterfalls of the Finger Lakes that includes Cascadilla Falls. And they said, lay down your heavy nest. I thought it was nest, but then they kept saying nest, N-E-S-T. Lay down your heavy nest, be still, and let the waters move. Lay down your heavy nest, be still, and let the waters move. Just everybody breathe and feel and repeat it again, Heather. Whew. Lay down your heavy nest, be still and let the waters move.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Someone else who hasn't gone yet. Uh, so Shalania, I uh, spoke to the Riachelo River and I heard the message, uh, feel the power of your love as a river. Uh, through all the cycles and seasons, we love and support you. Ooh, breathing and feeling. Ooh. Through all the cycles and seasons, we love you. Yes, thank you. Ooh. And Jimmy, are you the last one, brother? Okay. I I connect with Satred Lagunot Watavita. So, yeah, Satred Lagunot Watavita. Um, it says that remember you are magnificent and you are a divine being. And I think, Jimmy, is this one of the sacred lakes? I know that you called them in when we did the water lab back in the spring. Is this lake one of the sacred lakes that are that are up above uh, Bogota? Yeah. Huh. Whew. And again, when these great beings who themselves sparkle and shine and embody great beauty and inclusiveness. And so when they tell us to be magnificent, what they do is they mirror our magnificence through theirs. And so I just had this sense of the beauty of this beautiful lake. All right, now I'm, uh, I, is that everyone? Is that everyone? Yeah, I think, is that everyone, everyone spoken? Yes, and shared? Okay, all right, beautiful. Oh, sacred relatives, I am, I am deeply, deeply touched by our listening field today, both in the sharing of my stories and, and, uh, and the sharing of my family for the first time that I've ever done it in this way. And then for our um, assembly of our interbeing council to receive messages for 2022.